Hey, hey, happy day, boomity, boomity, boom, boom, way back when in the days of the Wild West, a cowboy, if he was short of money, he would go up to the bartender and say, hey, a glass of whiskey and a cartridge, a bullet, they cost the same, so can I give you all the bullet for a drink of whiskey? And that became commonplace, and that, of course, meant that they would refer to a drink of whiskey from there on as a shot of whiskey. Did you get that? <laughs> Is it true? I don't know, but that's what I've been told. Kind of sounds good, makes a good story. Now you have the president of Argentina. He's laying people off, firing them. Better way to say it, I guess. So far, he's uh, fired over 70,000 people. That's a lot of humanoids. There's over 3 million people work for the government. The government, of course, is broke. He's brought inflation way down. I think he's like at 17%, 11%. That's even better than 17. After it soared past 300%, this guy is good. He's with his chainsaw and he's doing stuff. You know what? Maybe we should all go to uh, Argentina. Maybe Venezuela's next. Canada and other countries, the U.S. too, is trying to be like Venezuela. They're all working to get there. And then, of course, somebody has to come in and bring it back to the right after all the damage is done. That's history. You'd kind of think people would figure it out. Not so much. Using cash. When you use cash, it's like telling the government what you do and what you buy is none of their business. That's why I like using cash, because, you know, they track you and everything else that you do. And my car talked to me the other day, scared the heck out of me. I'm driving along. All of a sudden, some woman starts talking. I looked around and thought, what have I done? <laughs> Who am I with? And it was my car. I had just saying that wasn't the government, but I moved on from that. British Columbia, Canada, they have almost $125 billion in provincial debt. And there's about 5 million people that live in the province. So that's about $25,000 per person. So if you have 10 kids, <laughs> 4 kids, pick a number. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Provincial politicians have borrowed more money than ever before. And they spend over, in British Columbia, over $4 billion on, on interest uh, last year. And they have so much money, or they get so much money at least, from the public. They tax everything that moves, and, and they come up with a new way to tax all of the time. That's what liberal governments do. These aren't even liberals. These are commie people, pinko people. They make Canada politicians almost look right wing, the ones in government. So what, what it is, is they have meetings, meetings to talk about raising taxes. What can we tax? That's all they do. They're supposed to have meetings about the citizens, how to benefit them, how to help them. Instead, they talk about how do we get more of their money. They do that on all levels of government. Trump, he's now asking for folks to write I'm talking now about the, the tip law. He said, you know, when I'm president, there'll be no more taxes on tips. And that resonates with a lot of people, certainly in the hospitality business. And now he's asking folks to, when they get a check in a restaurant, to write on it, uh, no tax on tips, vote Trump. <laughs> That's kind of a neat thing. That kind of motivates the masses of the great unwashed. And it's happening. There's all kinds of reports and photos on, on many social media outlets of people doing just that. I, I, I think that's good marketing there, Trumpster. Good marketing. Now, Flair Airlines. Uh, are you keeping up? I got topics here. News and views with attitude. Flair Airlines are a Canadian uh, discount airline. I've flown them. They're good, uh, I think. Uh, the prices are good, cheap, I think. Uh, for the most part, but, but they kind of lost me here yesterday. I got a, uh, an email from them. And it was actually June 14th, uh, 2024. The email was headlined, Flare, fly, proud, pride, guide. And it went on to show everything homosexual and where you should go. And you can go to Winnipeg and wave your flag. You can celebrate in Kitchener, Waterloo, and you can live it up in Halifax. And let's soar together. And they had photos of drag queens and, you know, that lifestyle. And when I have flown them in the past, they've had that lifestyle serving us coffee <laughs> and stuff. And, and you know, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable if, uh, you know, maybe someone's going to come up with an airline saying liberal airline. I'd be uncomfortable with that too. I, I, mean, I don't want to fly with a liberal. Bah! I mean, certainly don't want to fly with a plane full of people going to, uh, I don't know, see drag queens somewhere. But it's kind of interesting what they're doing. So I, 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 good for them. It's a free country. Do whatever you like. Free country. Lost my head there. This is Canada. We think it's a free country sometimes, so go ahead, but change your name. Call yourself Gay Air. Well, that would be good. Hey. Now, <laughs> lastly, we need mental health institutions for liberals. 
until there's a vaccine. We do. I suspect that the people, the marketer people at Flair Air are mental because they alienate, you know, when you go after a minority group, and in this case, you know, the homosexual numbers in Canada are very small. I think it's one, maybe two percent or whatever, but it's small. And, and now they're gay air. So <laughs> that seems silly. We got to get a vaccine. Get them out on that, will you? See ya.